Today I'm going to show you how to move a part across your board. Like if it's a game board for Monopoly or something, you can move your shoe across the board. I'm not going to tie it in with a dice yet. I'm just going to do a touch driver. And you don't really need uh, this game right here, but if you'd like to follow along exactly, come to this website right here. I will put this URL in the description. Click on these three dots, hit edit, and then you'll have this exact same thing and you can follow along exactly. All right, so I have my, my makeshift board here. It's just starting out. I'm gonna move these spawn locations back and I wanna put my tiles like Mediterranean and Baltic and all that. I wanna put them in as separate tiles because I'm gonna use a tween service to move my shoe or whatever piece in between, you know, to one, from one tile to the next. So I noticed that my board is 100 by 100. I want to make each tile 12 by 12. There's nine tiles on a side, not including the corners. So I need to change the size of this board. If I'm making it 12 studs across and nine tiles across, I need to make this 108 by one by 108, All right? So just a little bit bigger. And now the numbers will work out a lot better. Let me move that back even just a little more. There we go. Now let's put a part down. And this is going to be my Mediterranean, right? And what is that purple? Well, let's color them once we get them all in position. Let's go ahead. Let's might as well anchor it, right? And size. 17 by 1 by 12. There we go. I move that back, move this down, move it over to the edge, and plop it into place. There we go. Turn collisions off. Let's make another tile to the right. And this is going to be go. All right. And that, that's going to be square. So that's 17 by one by 17. I'll move that in. Oh, let's put the collisions on, bump that into place. Yeah, that looks good. Now I need eight more going across and I'm gonna duplicate Mediterranean by hitting Control D. There we go, Control D, Control D, Control D. I lost count already, Control D. Control D, Control D. Yeah, I bet I need one more. Control D. All right, let's go ahead and bump these in together. That one's already there. Oops, Control Z. There we go, bump them into place. And that's perfect. Oops. As soon as I said perfect, I messed up. There we go. That one's not moving. There. Nice. And there we go. All right. So I don't have my jail here. I'm only going to do this section just for the sake of time. All right. We're going to just set something up here. So that's Mediterranean. I have my go. Mediterranean is like a purple color. Let's go ahead and make it purple. This one is community chess. I'm just gonna call it COM1. We have a couple community chess. Uh, this one here is Baltic. And that's also purple. This one here is income tax. And Reading Railroad. Um, Oriental Avenue. I'll just do Oriental. That's good enough. And it's like a light blue. That'll work. Then I have Chance. I have a I have a board in front of me. That's why I'm pausing and looking. And then Vermont. It's gonna be a blue. 
And this one right here is Connecticut. That's also blue. All right, good. That gives you an idea. I'm not going to spend too much time decorating them because I'm going to work on moving stuff on this one. So here's our go. This is where our part's going to be. This is called white boxing a level if you're just putting like placeholders in and not decorating. So I'm eventually going to add my game pieces like my shoe and my hat and stuff. But for now, I'm just going to call this a shoe. There we go. I'm going to make that brown so it's clearly a shoe. Although it's what it's a steel color in the original game. Um, I'm going to put all of these parts in a model. Skip the shoe. There we go. Oops. I should have done that before I made my shoe. There. Right click, group, and then it's going to be tiles. And eventually we'll have 40 tiles in there, one for each spot. Let's move tiles into our board game. And let's move our shoe into board game. On the shoe, I'm going to right click. I'm going to make that a model too, because I want to have more than, I want to group my pieces together, my shoe and my hat and my uh, iron and stuff like that. So I'm going to call this game pieces. Cool. Now in board uh, game board, let's right click, add a module script, right? Module script. There we go. And the module script, I'm going to call this board utils. And it's tiny. Let's make that bigger. Let's call this board utils. Copy that. Paste it here. It's going to be the table we return with all of our stuff that we can call in other scripts. So I'm only going to use a test driver on this one just to get the piece moving. I'm not going to connect it to the game loop. But you'll get the idea of how to do these things. Um, and I'll do that later. I mean, in the next video. So I'm going to get a variable for my tiles. Script.parent.tiles. I'm going to make a variable for the number of tiles, which right now is only, what, 10? Because we didn't add the jail in the end. There'll be 40 at the end, 40 total when we're finished. So I commented that out just so that I remembered it. All right, and then I'll do a tween service. That's going to be what we're going to use to move our, our shoe or whatever piece we have. Tween service. Cool. And then we need a board map, right? Board map. And it's going to be a table. So these tables right here, that's curly brackets right here, right? So remember, these are curly brackets. All right, now we need a function. Not local, just do a function. Board utils, init board map. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my board map one because I want to be able to get my tiles in order because when I roll, I'm going to want to know where I'm going to go. And I don't want to be moving around to different places uh, randomly. Uh, I'm going to make this a table. So this is also curly brackets. These are curly brackets right here because I'm going to put more than just the tile in there. I'm going to call this a prop for property. I'm going to say tiles dot go. And here, eventually I'll have, oh, did I not put tiles? Make that a tiles with an S. That makes more sense because it has all the tiles. I'm going to put my price. I'm going to put who owns it. I'm going to put how, what the value is for the rent and if there's a hotel and stuff. All right, so let's just copy these and make a bunch more. And I'll need 10 total. So one, and then Control-V, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we'll make it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And instead of go, we have med. And this one is community chess. This one is Baltic. This one is income tax, Reading Railroad, uh, Oriental, 
and com, com one, oh, not com one, chance. We should make that chance one. Let's make that chance one. Let's go to our tiles, make this chance one, because there's going to be more than one chance. And we have to change that here, so there's no error. And what else? It was Vermont, Vermont's before Connecticut, right? And there's Connecticut. All right, so there's my board map. I'm going to knit that outside of my, outside of my uh, module script. Let's go ahead and we're going to do 40 of them uh, eventually, but for the sake of the video, we're just going to do the first 10. So function board utils. Right, so we're going to call this. We're going to be able to call this outside the script. We are going to call it from inside the script too. I'm going to say get tile by number. It's going to be important because we're going to be rolling dice. So we're going to have numbers. And then I'm going to return the board maps. These are square brackets right here. The value whichever we want, I'm going to return that table. So if I, if I passed in a 1, I would return this whole thing. All right. So let's see, let's go ahead and do our move now. All right, so we got function board utils, and we'll do a move piece. I always spell piece wrong. That's good enough. I'm going to pass in an item to move, like my shoe. Uh, current tile number and the roll value because this is going to be connected to the game loop. And remember, we are going to have to roll around uh, go and do stuff like that. But for now, let's just get things moving. So I'm going to say my destination tile equals current tile number plus roll value. Now, if we're at tile 38 and we roll and we go past go, we're going to have to handle that situation, but we don't have to handle it in this video. So we'll say local cur tile. Well, we already have our current tile number. Board utils. Get tile by number. Current tile number. And then we want, you know what? We don't want desk tile here. We want desk tile number, right? Because that's our current tile number plus our roll value. I'll say desk tile. Now we have to get the desk tile. Board utils. Get tile by number. And that's going to be the desk tile number. Nice. Do we need, even need this current tile number? You know what? We don't even need this, I don't think. Well, let's see. I just got it out of force of habit. I'll need a, a tween info because I'm going to move my part now. So we'll do a tween info, new. Roll value is going to be how many seconds it takes. So if I roll a 12, I want constant speed over all 12 tiles. If I roll a 2, I want it to be the same speed. So I'm going to make the time the same as the roll value. I'll do enum, easing style, linear. So it's going to be a constant movement. Let's go to the next line. I'll do an enum easing direction. And if you had like a bounce or something on your easing style, whether you want it to bounce in the beginning or the end, you'd put an in or an out. But linear, it doesn't matter. It's going to be the same. The, the next value is repeat count. We're not going to do any repeats. Uh, we don't want it to reverse. So we're going to put a false in here. And we don't want it to delay. We want it to move as soon as we tell it to move. And then let's go ahead and get a tween and we'll do our TS service, create, and we're going to tween the item to move. We need our tween info. And then down here, we're going to tween on position, right? Which will equal, whoops, desk tile, not the desk tile number, the desk tile itself the prop position. There we go. And then we don't want it to tween exactly onto the tiles position because it's going to go inside the tile 
what we're going to do is we're going to do vector three new and then just bump it up one stud for the destination so it slides smoothly over the board and it doesn't go inside the board all right and now let me get this this uh hanging on um, what do you call it parenthesis these are curly brackets by the way also so curly brackets i know are hard to see in the video i know it messes some people up and these are just regular parentheses right here. Like that's a parenthesis. That's a parenthesis. All right. So now play your tween. Everybody forgets to do that, including me. Play. And the problem with that, when you call play, the script continues on. It doesn't freeze in place until it's finished playing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait however long it took to do the tween, which happens to be the roll value. Then, when I get done all of this, I am going to return the desk tile number because that's going to become my new current tile number. So I was right about this. We don't need that line of code. I'm going to delete it. There we go. One less line of code. That'll work fine. Now let's make a little test driver to see if we can move our piece. Let's go to board game and then add a regular script. I'm going to call this uh, test board because we don't want to hook it into the game loop yet. We just want to see if it works. All right, so for my test board, what am I going to do? I need to get my board utils. Local board utils equals require script dot parent dot board utils then i need my shoe because i want to move that right script dot parent was a game pieces shoe this would all be coming from our game loop yeah that's probably where i'll drive that from yeah because you're going to select your you're going to select your shoe or your iron or whatever in the beginning and then I'll put that in with the player so they'll have access to that. Um, we'll do our board utils, init map, init board map. So all the pieces get registered. Let's wait five seconds so we can see things happening. And then we're going to do a mock roll by, by doing our uh, move piece. But remember, we're going to have our current tile number that will be updated by the board utils move piece. And we'll pass in our shoe. And we're starting out at go, right? So that's one. Current tile number is going to start at one. And then let's pretend we rolled a five. So that should put us on like Reading Railroad. Let's wait two seconds and pretend we're going to do another roll. So we'll get this right here. Copy. And now this right here will be our current tile number. Let's make that a two. Sweet. Let's go ahead and try it out. Oh, let's do a play from here. Hold on. Because I'm going to be way across the board. I'm not going to see it move. Let's do play from here. And there we go. Reading Railroad should be right there. That's our five. Good. It stopped for two seconds. And then we're going to move two more spaces. All right. So we got our, our movement. We got the basic movement uh, set up. And then in the next video, I'm going to work on going around the corners and going around go. And then maybe even tie it in with a game loop.